Hi guys, Gary RC here, back with another video. Today's video, we're going to be reviewing the uh, Drift Art 2 with the hop-ups. Now, it's a slightly different format to this video. We'll be doing it in three parts because I've got a lot to get through. So, first off, thanks to Chan RC for the lovely alloy wheels I've got on this car, which he sourced for me. Colin at CS Designs for this amazing shell which is now my favorite shell and it's a Mercedes AMG in this beautiful gold with some amazing decals so I'll let you have a look at that guys it is just fantastic now you'll see some proper footage of this running I'm trying to hold that to the camera without getting my fingers in the way sorry guys that is the most beautiful shell okay you'll get some good footage of that later and another thank you to the guys over at Drift Art. The team at Drift Art have sent me lots of fancy parts to test. So I've had a bit of an exclusive here. Now I've been sat on these parts for actually for nearly four weeks now, I think. But in between, I've gone on holiday and lots of things have come up which have kept me busy. And some of you who follow me on Facebook know that I've already mentioned I'll be doing a review on this. So it's the new steering servo system called the vector foil sorry correction dual vector foil and the key features that are different here now i've got an animation that i will pop up and talk about in a second that explains how this works probably better than i can show you here but the premise of it is the servo can be angled as you can see mine is sat at about 12 degrees here using different size angling blocks so these blocks go on the front and rear. I'm going to line them up so you can see them and I'll zoom in. Each block has its own pair. And that goes front and rear to give the servo the tilted angle. As you can see, they have a pre-cut angle into them. And that enables servo to be tilted as you can see there okay so those are the mounts of the servo they've got either side i'm just going to turn the wheel that way so you can see the mount in place there you go there's the front mount and the rear mount i'll see if i can show you from the other side the longer rear mount you can see in place there sorry about the mess of wires i did have this car much tidier but then the motor wouldn't work and it was a faulty motor and i had to strip everything out and do it again this video has taken so long to make, I've had to keep changing things and go back and do them again. So sorry about this. That's why it's been so long. The actual servo itself has an aluminium arm. And also the ends of the arm, if I can show you from there, are also aluminium. Adjusting the angle of the servo allows you to change the angle at which the steering engages. So if you're adjusting the caster of the wheel, you can adjust the steering angle so that this not steering angle, sorry, the servo swing angle to match the caster. And what that gives you is a much, much, much smoother steering and instantly full lock. No, no questions asked. I didn't have to do any fine tuning. I just got full lock straight away. And that is down to this new servo system. I've set it at 12 degrees, which is kind of middle of the road, and it's given me the setup for my 98 millimeter car pretty easily. Also at the front where you've got, I wanna show you how close this is, how well engineered it is. If you look closely there, can you see how close that is? The actual arm when it turns, it can move so closely, so precisely engineered, but Drift Art thought of everything, and if you do need to space it, there are spaces that you can put underneath. So this arm is in two pieces, and again, I'll put some pictures up to show you how it comes. So you can actually set the settings to adjust how low it goes, depending on the angle you've got the servo at. Very adjustable. I mean, I've gone for the middle of the road settings. I haven't used any spaces, and it, it's absolutely perfect. In terms of how it impacts the steering itself. I mean, obviously I'm gonna do some test footage to show you. It's just having that ability to go full lock straight away. And you can do that with the standard drift art, but it requires 
a bit more work. In this instance, it didn't take me much effort at all. I was getting full lock both ways, full angle, sorry, not just lock, as in parallel Ackerman. I don't think you can get any more steering angle than that, really. Okay. Now, one thing I've got to show is it does give full lock both ways. Yep. I've done something there. Right, I'll check that. Okay. So let's power on the transmitter and see how this works. I'm using my EX6R. We've got a GL Racing 8800 kV motor, GL Racing censored ESC, um, and we've got the V3 gyro there. Like I said, it was tidier, but I had to redo everything. Okay, so the car is on, and as you can see, we're getting full lock in both directions. Oh, that could be a bit more. Right, why is that going on now? So let's try that again. This video is not without hitches. Okay guys, so take two. Full lock, both directions. There we go. Lovely. Much happier. Brilliant. Camber adjustment is controlled by these rods here to move the wheels in and out. Caster adjustment is controlled by these rods here to tilt the wheels back. Toe in and out is controlled by the steering rods there on either side. When we change these settings, especially when we adjust the caster, but even to a lesser and greater degree, the toe in and out and the camber, it affects how the arms that pull from the servo engage. It affects the angle at which they have to move across so if you imagine, with this servo angled like this, it moves in a sweeping motion, an arc that comes across this way, almost backwards and up and down. Whereas if the servo is horizontal, if that was perfectly horizontal, the arm movement is just going to be in one dimension, pretty much. Have I said that right, one dimension? I think you get the gist I'm trying to say here. The arm movement just moves like that pretty much. By altering the angle, you're bringing in as the wheels turn in, and you can see as the caster adjustment causes the wheels to, instead of turning flatly this way and that way, they tend to lean back. And that leaning back is where this works. That's the best way to explain it, guys. If you almost look at my wheels, you can see the inside of them when they're down on for the inner wheel with the caster set the way it is. The way these arms are now set up, that works in complement. If the servo was more vertical, so more upright, as it pulls across, the arm itself doesn't flow, lend itself to this movement. It's kind of fighting it. And I hope the animation that Drift Art sent me will explain that more clearly. So there okay. are other optional extras on this car, the aluminium base plate, the uh, tooth gears for the uh, rear drivetrain, and also I have replaced all the arms with these gold adjustable turnbuckles, I think you see those. But those I will review later. It's all about the steering today. So The animation explains this better, but all I can tell you is that the steering just seems smoother. Now the standard Drift Art 2, the steering is very good. I love the servo horn design with that. And you get a lot less wheel shake and it's much easier to set up. As you can see here, very easy to see where the center of the uh, horn has to go. You've got that little gold spot in the middle there which is a, uh, a marker that you can use and with that set your wheels up accordingly. I've got about three degrees toe out on both sides and the track width for this setup is <clears throat> 77 millimeters at the back and about 75 76 at the front so what did i notice the most with this new upgrade well apart from the steering system not having this extra adjustability just from the standard setup i've done with this i've noticed now i can hold the sideways drift a lot easier there's hardly any wheel shake at all and there wasn't with the standard drift art 2 either but i found with this there is just that much easier to get a flow through the front end. When I review the tooth belt, which does give more power and traction, 
this complements it really well. So as far as I can tell so far, this is an, op an optional upgrade, which I would really recommend. I mean, I, I won't have that without now. And I haven't even tested the other angles yet, but I intend to when I do the next video. And if I'm doing it with a maybe a different size chassis, maybe if I go for a uh, 110 millimeter, 124 scale, then I can change the servo angle again and see how that works. For me, this setup is per pretty much perfect now, so I don't want to mess around with it. And I've said this before, I tend not to switch chassis, um, chassis and shells. I choose a shell for a chassis and I stick with it. So, for example, you've seen my video with the HT1, which has got the white skyline. That will always be the white skyline. And I've got the uh, XRX, which is the uh, G Advan GTR, uh, Liberty Walk. And that's going to stay the same. I'm not going to switch shells on that one. That's because once I've got them set up and running nicely, I don't really want to have to reset them up again. It is hard work getting them right. I have to say this optional extra really did help. Um, the rest is really down to seeing how it handles in the drift footage. Now, just remember, guys, this has got the optional tooth belt, so it will look different to the standard drift art when it's moving. But we will review that in the next video. So, guys, big thanks to Drift Art for sending me this exclusive. Um, and for the other parts they've sent me, the tooth belts. And there are other parts I've yet to review, which I'm going to review next time. I hope that gives you some insight into this steering system. Uh, okay, guys, that's all for this video. I'm going to leave you with some drift footage. I might talk over that and give you some more idea of what's going on. And I'll see you guys all next time for part two, which will be about the tooth belt. So, guys, this is the dual vector four system in action. Uh, remember, I've got a tooth bell on this car, so it is a lot faster. Again, you can see in the slow motion clip that the car is moving sideways pretty fluently, and it's going to hit a bump in a second and just ride over it like it's not even there. Really good suspension system, really good steering system. Now, in a second, the car is going to do a maneuver I didn't expect, but do not worry, no drift arts or damage in the making of this video, and that gorgeous shell is still unscratched. But in a second, you'll see me getting a little bit too adventurous with the extra power. And I'm going to end up sliding off the edge. And here we go. Is it now? Here we come, guys. Sorry. Boom. That's the first time I've slid the car off the edge of the table. But there you go. It does happen to me. So overall, what I'm trying to show here is that the car will just sit sideways very easily. And I can do this even with full throttle with this 8,800 uh, kV uh, sensor brushless motor. If anything, with the steering full lock to left or right, with the full throttle on, the car almost slows down as it's fighting itself, but then slides sideways beautifully. Uh, I'll have that footage for when we do the tooth belt review, because that's more in line with that, with the power coming from the back wheels. But suffice for this video, I wanted to just show how the steering handles and how the car moves. Overall, I think you can see that you know, the Drift Art's brilliant anyway. It's a very good car. And then standard spec, I love the steering system, but I have got that much more steering angle available. And the car does seem to just want to go where I want it to go. Important point to mention here is on the previous Drift Art video, I had a counterweight over the steering system. In this video, I haven't. And I think that's in part the way the steering a new servo, maybe the weight of the arm is a little bit heavier, but also the angle of the servo and the steering system, the way it engages is just with more control. So overall, I'm very impressed with this servo system and the servo arm, after using it, I don't think I'll be without. And certainly, I'll be ordering another one for my other Drift Dart too, which I'm going to use for the uh, 124th scale. Guys, that's all for today. If you like what I do here, please subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you all guys in the next video.